Hey guys, sup? Scotch Duck here once again. Right, collection update time. So, interesting selection here, I must say, because like pretty much every one of these games has, well, most of them, having a little story behind them. Uh, so this is probably going to be like uh, quite a rambly one. I uh, hope you are sitting comfortably. But um, did I not say, did I not literally say that in the last fucking collection update? What's that? puppet show that says, I hope you're sitting comfortably. Fucking green and purple guy. What was he called again? Are you sitting comfortably? Oh, fuck it. Anyway, first game. Samba de Amigo, Party Central. Okay, so what we have here is a dormant Sega IP that has had a revival from Sonic Team, no less. So it's like, of course I was going to fucking buy this one. Why wouldn't I have bought this one? Okay. And, uh, yeah, I, I only started playing it just last night, actually. There was a demo a little while ago. I played a little bit of that. It's got a bunch of, like, contemporary songs and all that in it that would kill a Twitch VOD and uh, some other Sega brand of music in there, which was probably more appealing to me. I'm enjoying this a lot more than I thought I would. Like, I don't know. Maybe I was just into the fact that it was getting me, like, active, or I was just, like... Because I have got this game on the Dreamcast, okay? I have the Wii version of the Dreamcast game as well. Terrible. Terrible, terrible port, okay, does not work, literally. But the Dreamcast version with the uh, Maracas, you know, that's one of the best controllers ever. Like, no joke, it, it just works, you know? You just hold the Maracas and it detects if it's low, medium, or high. Get every single time, it's crazy. But um, this one relies on good old-fashioned, like, switch waggle. And it's fine. It actually does work, mostly. But the overall style of the game and all that, and all the like, different modes and stuff was actually what was drawing me in. Like, I love the fact that there's a, a mission mode in this game, which is spruced up to be like Amigo trying to like get more followers on the fucking like, you know, streaming app. You know what I mean? I even tried like uh, the Battle Royale mode that's in this game, which is basically just like a little simple elimination process thing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's surprisingly a lot of fun. Yeah, so... Hey, nice one, Saiga, I suppose. Some day Amigo. Party Central. Uh, right, speaking of Sonic Team, I picked this up. We were talking about this on stream. We were playing uh, Nights into Dreams, the, I hate, the PC version, you know, on Steam. Um, received, I think this was like relatively recent. I can't, I'm, I think my timeline's a bit fucked up, but basically I came across a patch saying that you can now play Nights into Dreams on Steam at 60 FPS. And Nights into Dreams has always been one of those games where the logic is tied to the frame rate, so it never really got like uh when it, the PC version came out, it was never really a 60 FPS game. Well, there was a patch out there, and I played it, and it was pretty good, and we were talking about this, and I was like, huh, I don't own this, so maybe I should. This is the Nights into Dreams, uh, what's the actual name again? Nightopia Dream Pack for the PlayStation 2. This is the PlayStation 2 remake of Nights into Dreams, which was the basis for the HD remaster that we got, like, a decade ago. Fuck me, it's been a decade since the remaster came out. Fucking hell. Uh, can you believe, by the way, that this is the first Japanese PlayStation 2 game I have? Right? Like, I don't know, that just seems like you'd think I would have had more by now, but no, this is the first gen. Pretty crazy. But, uh, yeah, it comes with the game, obviously. It also comes with, like, a little storybook, like a little bit of like storybook that I can't even read. Uh, sort of retail, retelling the game. I flipped through it. It's very nice. But uh, yeah, nice little bit of a um, uh, history right here, I would say. You know, quite pleased to have that. I'll put that up and, along with all my other Knights memorabilia. So yeah, pretty nice. Okay, so this next one, right? You know how the news is out the now? that the Xbox 360 marketplace is going to be shutting down sometime next year, okay, with plenty of time. And whenever it happens, you know, there's a lot of discussion, you get, like, a lot of lists of games that are just going to be, like, lost to time. And even though Xbox does a pretty decent job with their backwards compatibility, inevitably, there's going to be some games that were not, you know, put on the backwards compatibility list for the 360 that are going to be lost to time. I had a look through the list, and nothing too bad is being lost, okay? At least not a lot of shit that is not already on, you know, other platforms. 
But yeah, it kind of like uh, sparked up a bit of conversation, kind of like when the PS3 was almost gone. You know, I, I bought a bunch of shit on the PS3 and then Sony was like, yeah, actually, we'll keep up for the time being. I was like, I got played there. Uh, but yeah, it just got me thinking about old 360 games, you know? And I just... Um, not even games that are going to be lost to time because of the marketplace, because a lot of 360 games that came out on disc aren't even available digitally. But it just got me thinking about a few, so... I've had a couple, I've got a couple, like, I'm watching on eBay, but I got this one for now. Who remembers this? Project Silphied. This is like a Square Enix, I guess, like, flight sim game. It did not get the best reviews, I remember, which is why I passed up on it, you know? Otherwise, it probably would have been a right up my alley, quite frankly. Or maybe the fact that it is some sort of, like, a flying game, like, engaging space saga from Square Enix, makers of Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts. You know, how could you resist? But I, I was just like, I just, it's just one of those games that kind of popped in my mind. I'm like, you know what? We're gonna give this another try. Let's see what this was all about. Probably wasn't a bit much, but I got it anyway. Project Selfie. Okay, cool. Right, and uh, this one, I'm very surprised I did not already own this. All right. Um, I had a friend over the other night there. Uh, he just came over to hang out, and uh, we were like, oh, let's play a game. And uh, he always likes to play co-op games, all right? Sometimes when I've got full care, you know, I just watch them play games, which I'm cool with, but he really likes to play co-op. And we are just browsing the Xbox, and he found on my Xbox Time Splitters 2, and we played for the whole game. It was brilliant. Time Splitters 2, fucking fantastic game. I'm surprised that I've not owned this yet. This is Time Splitters 1, a PlayStation 2 exclusive which I always forget about, and some really fucking ugly, like, character models on the cover there, alright? Like, I don't think too many people are that fond of this game. I don't even know if it's, like, got any story mode or whatever. It's, like, just a bunch of missions and shit, you know? Um, yeah, like, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's actually quite shocking how little I know about this game, because I love 2, I love Future Perfect, you know? Fantastic games, one of my favourite, like, games I used to play on the PS2. Just never got around to this one. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this goes. I, I will be giving it a try, 100%. So, yeah, <laughs> Time Splitters 1. Okay, now, this is interesting, guys. This is interesting, right? Did you see, right, the announcement from uh, Night Dive Studios? You know, the guys that do those really amazing, like, uh, remasters of the FPS games. They did, like, Doom 64. They did, like, uh, Power Slave. They did, like, the Quake games, I'm pretty sure. They do phenomenal work. But they came out and said that they were remastering Turok 3, the N64 game. Now, they were, they were remastering something else as well that escapes me. But I just, I don't know, I just, I just heard that and I'm like, Turok 3? Why that one? Because I don't know anything about Turok. Never really played them or anything, right? I remember they were games that were on like the N64, they're infamous for having a lot of fog, and the there was a 2008 reboot for the PS3 and 360 that had a really overpowered knife weapon. Okay, that's, that's the extent of what I remembered from Turok, but I went on to the Wikipedia page for the series, and I uh, was looking at all the games. There's three N64 games, one spin-off that's also on N64, uh, a GameCube, Xbox, and PS2 multiplat, and the Reboot. Okay, those, those. So there's like six Turok games, basically, and I happened to click on the PlayStation 2, GameCube, Xbox game, which is called Turok Evolution, and I immediately saw this. Okay, this is the cover art. This like dinosaur here, and <laughs> this is. You know, in my last collection update, I was just talk. I was just getting all like nostalgic about my street and Amplitude and Dog's Life, just these random games that I had on demo discs. It's like, they're just like tangentially linked to the past. It's like, oh fuck, I need to I need to check that shit out. Well, this is about as tangential as you can get because when I saw this cover, it, it okay, I was about to say it was like a punch in the face. It wasn't, it was more like a pinch on the cheek, but I just remembered it right away. I used to like go to the shop all the time, Comet. Comet. I think I've talked about this before. I used to go to Comet all the time, and they had like a kiosk with a PS2, an Xbox, and a GameCube, and I used to just get my dad to drive me up there so I could look at it all the time. I annoyed the fuck out of him, alright? And you 
what I didn't realize is that you tend to, like, notice, you tend to, like, remember the games that they had on display, because it was a comic, you know, it wasn't a dedicated game shop, they just had, like, a friggin' limited inventory, and you just, whatever was there was there, you know, like, I remember one that they always had was, like, Agent Under Fire, you know, the James Bond game, that was always there, but one that they also had there was Turok Evolution, and it's crazy, I never had any interest in this game. It was a game about dinosaurs, I was like, eh, whatever, fuck it, I'll just look at this game here. But when I was on that Wikipedia page and I just saw this cover, it was just like, oh, and that's all I need. That's all I need. I go on eBay and I picked up a copy. And it set me down a bit of a rabbit hole because I also got Jurok Rage Wars, which is like the multiplayer spin-off game, which is, I think, um, kind of similar to Time Splitters. I, there's like a... There's, like, something going on here, right? Because see a lot of these, like, um, FPS games around this time. Okay, a lot of the people who were making them were either, like, the same people or, like, knew each other. Because you always hear about, like, you know, some of the Metroid Prime developers also made, like, Time Splitters. And then there was also, like, Turok and Goldeneye, you know, like, there was, there was a, there was some very small circles of people talking all the time. But, yeah, anyway, there's Turok Wars and I also picked up, um... Turok Dinosaur Hunter, which is the first one. I already have the second Turok game. Um, I've had that for a while. The third game, the one that's actually getting fucking remastered, I don't have because it's expensive. And I'm wor I'm cur I'm down this Turok rabbit hole now, so I'm curious, right? Is the re- Because, like, I looked at the reviews, and Turok 3 is the one that doesn't really have the best reviews. Is that why it's getting remastered? Because it deserves a second chance? It's like- like, Night Dive are actually recognizing, okay, we could do the popular ones, but no, we'll do this one that actually needs the remaster treatment. Is that what they're doing? I don't know, I'm curious. Let me know if anybody knows that. But yeah, Turok games. We'll see We'll see how I get on with this. Maybe I'll get Turok on 360 before that gets discontinued, which I don't think it will. But anyway. Okay, and uh, last thing. This isn't really, like, an update for a collection, but I guess it is, like, another little story that uh, I want to tell, right? So, you know how we're in, like, it's, we're officially in, like, the end of the year season with video games, alright? There's so many, there's so much shit coming out, so much stuff you have to get through, you have to, like, pick and choose, be selective of what you want to dedicate your time to. Well, I made a bit of a mistake, um, about a month ago or something. I started Persona 2 Innocent Sin. Okay, I was looking for a game to play, an RPG, it was just in my game room, and I saw it, because I've, I've had that... PSP game since, like, it came out, you know, I was like, eh, fuck it, you know, like, I, I want to get the Persona games under my belt, let's play Persona 2, fuck it. And I was aware, right, that Persona 2 was actually two games, Innocent Sin, and the sequel was Eternal Punishment, but I didn't realize how integrally, am I using that word right, how, like, important it was to play both of them. Turns out it is quite important. So I got to the end of the game, and I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. You know, it's definitely an old Atlas game, and all the negative connotations that come with that. But I, I dug it. I surprisingly dug it. And I thought to myself, what's the best way to play Innocent Sin? Turns out, not too easy. You either have to track down super expensive PS1 version, which I actually do own, um, but apparently it's like old and doesn't contain a lot of the quality of life improvements in the PSP remakes. Because yeah, I should probably say that. Persona both Persona 2 games got remakes for the PSP in Japan, but we only got Innocent Sin over here. But there was a fan translation for Eternal Punishment, but I had to mod my PSP, which I never did before. I've never, ever modded my PSP. I heard for years that it was the easiest thing to do, that everybody was doing it like two decades ago when the fuck the PSP came out. Everybody was able to hack that shit so easily, get all the emulators on it, get all the pirated games that they wanted on it. I kept getting told it was the easiest thing. I never tried it. I finally did it, and it is fucking easy. Holy shit, it's so fucking easy to mod your PSP. So I got Eternal Punishment on this, and I finished that. And it was probably because I was getting a bit burnt out doing both games in a row, because that was like 80 hours or something. I spent on that, but yeah, I was very glad to see that done, but you know, I got Persona 2 under my belt now, so, well, I do Persona 1 soon, well, maybe after we get through this, uh, fucking, all these new games coming out, because it's gonna be rough, it's gonna be rough, but yeah, that's everything, guys, uh, yeah. 
see you after. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.